Father, we want to bless your name tonight. You are great and greatly to be praised. There is no fathoming of your greatness. You are greater than the greatest. You are mightier than the mightiest. We thank you for all your awesomeness, your faithfulness, your might, your powers. We bless your holy name tonight. Father, we thank you for the privilege to be here. We take it not for granted because it is only you that has brought us here. By your spirit, you have enabled us even to go through our day and come here into your sanctuary to learn more of you. Father, we are grateful. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Tonight, O oh Lord, we pray that you will speak to us again. As your children, you will speak to us. You give us understanding. You give us revelation. And your name alone will be glorified. Father, we want to thank you for the bundle of joy you gave us earlier today, O oh Lord. We are grateful. We are grateful for the good news. Thank you, Daddy, for the bouncing baby girl you added onto the church. We are grateful, O oh Lord. Daddy, accept our thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that this month and the rest of this year will be filled with good news for us. To the glory of your holy name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Greet somebody and say you are welcome into the house tonight. Hope you had a great day. Please be seated. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the privilege to share the word tonight. I pray that both the speaker and the hearers will be blessed in Jesus' name. And for us men that are joining us online, you are welcome in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we pray that the Lord will meet with you tonight and bless you abundantly, even as you have joined us in Jesus' mighty name. Tonight, we're going to be looking at um, a topic um, titled Time. Time. Praise the Lord. So we all have an idea what time is. I know all of us are working, um, so we can relate with time. And for some of us that have children, we can relate with time. For some of us that are doing one thing or the other, we can relate with time. So there's no way that you are thinking about time and you are not thinking about an activity or a goal or something that is attached to time. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, praise the Lord, verse 1, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. The New Living says, for everything there's a season, a time for every activity under heaven. So the word purpose can also be synonymously related with activity. For every activity under heaven. So there is time for every season. We, we know in the um, book of Genesis, the Bible says that seed time, as long as the heart remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. So the definition of time, according to the dictionary in layman's time, is the indefinite continued progress of existence and events in the past, present, and future regarded as a whole. So you're looking at the whole past, present, and future as a whole. The whole of embodiment is time. All life activities are guided by time. We'll see that in that Ecclesiastes chapter 3, in the subsequent verses from verse 2, the Bible says that a time to be born was breaking down. Father broke down the times. A time, and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. 
a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. So we see that there are so many things that can happen. But all those things are guided by time. Time is regimental. When you look at time, it is very regimental. It occurs in a uniform manner. You know, something that's regimental is something that you, you, know, you treat in a rigid, uniform manner, subject to strict discipline. So, even if you don't want to get up at 7 a.m., the time will keep moving. It's, it's uniform. It keeps going. It doesn't matter whether you get up or not, the time will keep moving. Time is only relevant on the hearth. In eternity, it does not really exist. Because eternity is timeless. Praise the Lord. Eternity is forever. It's an unending time. A state to which time has no application. It's, eternity is timeless. It's a time is a period of timelessness. There is no measure to the time with at the afterlife. Genesis chapter one. We see there when God was creating the heavens and the earth. In verse two, the Bible says the heart was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So evening and morning were the first day. So creation and the regimentation of time, 12 hours of day, 12 hours of of night, sometimes you have longer days and shorter nights, longer nights and shorter days because of the seasons. Praise the Lord. So we see that when God created the earth, He created time, He created uniformity. So He made the light to command the day and darkness to command the night. There are different aspects of time in the Bible, and I want us to look at those aspects tonight, and really it's for us to understand eventually what time we are in. Personally, as a body of Christ, someone living in the dispensation of grace, what is it? What does it mean for us? Praise the Lord. The Bible talks about appointed time. Genesis chapter 18, verse 14. Genesis 18, verse 14. An appointed time is a particular time. It's very specific to something. Genesis 18, verse 14. The Bible says, is, there, is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. So God was speaking to Abraham when he was in his old age. A time where people will say, you know, it's an hopeless situation. Don't even think about it. God said that I will return at the appointed time. And I will give Sarah a son. So there's an appointed time. It's very specific to a particular thing. Psalm 102, verse 13. Psalm 102, verse 13. The Bible says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. 
for the time to favor her, yet the set time is come. So an appointed time is a set time. It can be a time of favor for somebody. It can be a time of breakthrough for another person. It can be a time of good success for somebody else. Exodus chapter 9 verse 5 to 6. Exodus chapter 9 verse 5 to 6. We are still looking at appointed time. And the Lord appointed a set time saying, Tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. Verse 6. And the Lord did that thing on the morrow. And all the cattle of Egypt died. But of the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. So God was speaking to Moses that Pharaoh doesn't want you to go by this time tomorrow at a particular time. I'm going to move and I'm going to do certain things. Praise the Lord. So it's set time is one aspect of time. The Bible also talks about the process of time. Process of time, Genesis chapter 4. We are going to be looking at the first three verses. We know the story very well about um, Cain and Abel. Abel. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bear Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bear his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Verse 3. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And the Bible says in verse 4, And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. In the process of time, these people grew. In verse 1, the Bible records that they were born. Cain was born. After that, his brother was born. And in the process of time, they grew. They became adults. They knew how to give unto the Lord. And they both brought things, offerings. You can categorize them in the same family. They, are, they both brought offerings to the Lord. But one was accepted and one was rejected. Praise the Lord. So in the process of time is another aspect of time. It usually occurs over a period. Exodus chapter 2 verse 23 and it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage and they cried and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. So these people were in slavery. They were going through hard labor. It wasn't one day. It was not a week. It was, not an, it was not a set time. It was in a process of time. It was over a period of time. Just like a pregnant woman is in the process of time. From conception, the process of time starts. Praise the Lord. Month one, month two, month three, month four, month five, and different things happen during those times. But it's an entire process that an expectant person has to go through. A student is in the process of time. From the time that a student signs an application, fills out an application and submits it to a school and they apply, um, they ad admit the student into the body, the school body for a particular course. The student be, is in the process of time. It may be a five-year course. It may be seven years. The doctors spend about eight years in, in, in medical school. That's a process of time. An unemployed person can be in the process of time. Praise the Lord. Somebody who's unemployed who doesn't have a job can be unemployed for a, 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 a time, a period of time. It can be in the process of time. 
also talking about different aspects of time, the Bible talks about undue time. Undue time. John chapter 2, verse 4. We know the story very well. Maybe we could, you should read from verse 1. John chapter 2. And the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. Verse 3. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto, the, unto him, They have no wine. Verse 4. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. Which means that Jesus was saying, Why are you, you know, uh, uh, exposing me? Why are you, you know, bringing me up here? This is not the time. The time is not yet due for me to start um, all the things that I have to do in the heart. On due time. The Bible also talks about on due time when Jesus was talking to the disciples in John chapter 7. John chapter 7, verses 1 to 6. I'll read from the New Living Translation. John 7, verses 1 to 6. After this, Jesus traveled around Galilee. He wanted to stay out of Judea, where the Jewish leaders were plotting his death. But soon it was time for the Jewish festival of shelters. And Jesus' brother said to him, Leave here and go to Judea, where your followers can see your miracles. You can't become famous if you hide like this. If you can do such wonderful things, show yourself to the world. You see it? For even, verse 5, for even his brothers didn't believe in him. Verse 6, Jesus replied, Now is not the right time for me to go. But you can go anytime. Praise the Lord. So Jesus knew that the time wasn't ripe for him to do certain things. And it's very important for us to know as children of God, is what I want to do the right time for me to do it? Is it the due time for me to do it? So the Bible talks about undue time. The Bible also talks about short time. Short time, Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Revelation 12, verse 12. Talking about the devil. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants, inhabitants of the heart and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. So the devil... You know, talking about the things to come. There will still be some people here on heart. If Jesus tarries, when after rapture, the devil is let loose into the heart. There will still be people that are living, and some of them are still going to be believers. But the Bible says there will be a lot of pain, there will be a lot of torment, because the devil will come down with great wrath. Praise the Lord. The Bible also talks about full time also known, about, known as time of maturity, full time. Luke chapter 1, verse 57. We know the story of Elizabeth, that she was waiting on the Lord for a long time. Luke chapter 1, verse 57. The Bible says, now Elizabeth's full time came, that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. Praise the Lord. Women can relate very well with this. They, they call something, you know, for expectant mothers, they call something full-time, full-time birth. A full-time birth means that the baby stayed in the womb for the number of time it should be to grow into maturity, to be able to survive on its own, for the lungs to be able to breathe on its own when it comes into the environment. So Elizabeth brought forth John a full-time Romans chapter 5, verse 6. Romans 5, verse 6. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 6. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 6. 
who gave himself a ransom for her to be testified in due time. So when Jesus came and spent three and a half years in ministry, even at the time when the disciples were trying to hug him, the time he was telling them about his death and resurrection and how he was going to go on the cross for humanity, he waited until the due time, until the fullness of time. First Peter chapter 5, verse 6, the Bible says we should humble ourselves before, under the mighty hand of God, that we, he may exalt us in due time. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. And for those who don't want to humble themselves, and uh, you know, they want to be proud and carry the spirit of pride, they will not get the exalt, the exaltation from God. Due time will not even apply because they will still go have to go through a lot of tests on humanity. Praise the Lord. So going through the process of time for test of humility in that verse that we read at first Peter chapter five verse six, one must go through the process of time of test for humility for somebody to be exalted in due time. Full time but full time. We talked about so far, I want to make sure you are following me. We talked about the first one. Appointed time. What was the second one? Process of time. The set time is the appointed time. We talked about the process of time. We talked about undue time. We talked about the short time. We talked about full time. So full time but appointed time. Praise the Lord. The process of time goes through and it becomes full time and that full time is what births appointed time. Praise you the Lord. So when God said to Abraham in that Genesis chapter 18 that at the appointed time, at the set time, that Sarah shall have a son. There was a process that still has to happen from the time God told Abraham to the time that Sarah eventually had the son Isaac. So full time is the completion of the process of time. I hope you are following me. The Bible also talks about the last time. The last time. 1 John chapter 2 verse 18. Or maybe we can read from verse 17. 1 John chapter 2 verse 17. And the world passeth away, and the lost thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrist, whereby we know that it is the last time. Praise the Lord. So God gives us a lot of signs. And some of the things that are happening around us now, we're supposed to be thinking deeply about them and not just take them for, you know, at the surface. Says little children, this is the last time. And you will hear that the Antichrist shall, is here. And right now we know that people are already talking about that the Antichrist is here. We can see certain things that signifies that the Antichrist is here. And he said that this is how we know that this is the last time. The Bible also talks about perilous times. Perilous times. And the word perilous also means, you know, dangerous, difficult times. And we see that where the Bible talks about perilous times, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, it doesn't use the word time. It says times in plural. It says, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. So they can be in different kinds. Verse 2. Let's look at the New Living Translation. For people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God. So you have some people in the population who will be scoffing. They are God's scoffers. 
disobedient to their parents. You can have some people in the population that are children and they are still disobedient to their parents. You can have some people that are adults and still disobedient to their parents. And ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. Verse 3. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. Verse 4. They will betray their friends in these perilous times. They will be reckless. Go in New York City driving, you will see that. They will be puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than God. If you go to Times Square at 10 p.m. on a weekday, you will see people who love pleasure more than God. Praise the Lord. Verse 5. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. They will be coming to church every regularly, but they will not accept the word of God wholly. If God says you should not uh, uh, steal, you should not lie, you should forgive, they will not forgive. They will say, I'm not Jesus. It's only Jesus that can forgive. And they come to church. They are religious. Praise the Lord. These are things that will happen in perilous times. So that's one other aspect of times, and it's of different kinds from what we read in that Bible passage. Praise the Lord. So what is possible with time? And we are going somewhere tonight. What's possible with time? Number one, time can be lost. And I hope we all agree. Time can be lost. Can, time can be lost due to procrastination. I want to go and cut my hair at 8 p.m. Uh, no, I changed my mind. I'll do it tomorrow. That's, we have lost maybe another 16 hours doing something else. Procrastination. Time can be lost. Time can be lost due to carelessness. Time can be lost as a result of distractions. Praise the Lord. Have you been somewhere where something happened, you were busy looking, and you missed the bus? You missed the bus. The next bus that's coming is 30 minutes time. Praise the Lord. You have been distracted. You've lost time there. Time can be lost due to disobedience. And we can see that the children of Israel, a perfect example of disobedience, Time can also be lost due to lack of vision or purpose. Praise the Lord. If somebody does not have a goal for the day, the day will just go by. And you wonder at night, what did I really achieve today? What did I really do? What did I do? Because there was no purpose for the day. There was no vision casted. Time can be lost in trial. Praise the Lord. Time can be lost in trial. We know the story of Job very well. His, his faith was being tested. Somebody, you know, accused God and said, you know what, this guy is just serving you. He's upright just because you have blessed him. You've surrounded him. you protected him. You give him everything that makes his life glorious. That's why he's serving you. Let me deal with him. If I deal with him, you will see that he's going to renounce God. So, Job lost so many things. He was in trial until the end of the, cha the end chapter, chapter 42. Until he prayed for his friend, the Bible says that he started to be restored. And he was given double, more than what he had before. But in terms of time, he was older, but he still gave birth. God still gave him more ch um, children again. He still had wealth again. So one can lose time in times of trial. Exodus chapter 12, verse 40 to 41. The Bible says that the children of Israel, now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. 
And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the self same day. And that's very profound. Not a, an hour more. The self same day, it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. So at exactly 430 years, they left Egypt. But if you remember very well in Genesis chapter 15, verse 13 to 14, the Bible said that God said that they would be in captivity for 400 years. Praise the Lord. And he said unto Abraham, Abraham, know of a surety that I see shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. Verse 14. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward they shall come out with great substance. They did come out with great substance, but they spent 430 years. They lost 30 years in Egypt. They spent longer than they should have been there. Time can be restored. And that's the second point. Time can be restored spiritually now. Praise the Lord. Joel chapter 2 verse 25. Joel 2 verse 25. God promised us. He says, and I will restore to you the years that the locust had eaten. The cancan worm and the caterpillar and the parma worm, my great army which I sent among you. So God was saying there that even though you may have lost three years, five years, ten years, fifteen years, I will restore. So time can be restored spiritually. Physically, you can't, you know, backdate your, you, you can't backdate, backdate your age, but you, God can speed you up. Praise the Lord. God can make you to recover what you have lost. Time can be manipulated. Time can be manipulated. Genesis chapter 29 verse 18. We know the story of Jacob very well. Oh poor Jacob. Jacob was recorded as being so much in love with Rachel. Let's read the New Living Translation. And he told our father... I will work for you for seven years if you will give me Rachel, your younger daughter, as my wife. Verse 19. So Laban agreed. I would rather give her to you than to anyone else. Stay and work with me. Verse 20. So Jacob worked seven years to pay for Rachel. But his love for her was so strong that it seemed to him but a few days. Verse 21, finally the time came for him to marry her. I have fulfilled my agreement. Jacob said to Laban, now give me my wife so I can marry her. And we know what happened that night. Something happened. Verse 25, because of our time. But when Jacob woke up in the morning, it was Leah. What have you done to me? Jacob raged at Laban. I worked seven years for Rachel. Why have you tricked me? It's not our custom here to marry off a younger daughter ahead of the firstborn. Laban replied, verse 27. But wait until the bridal week is over. Then we'll give you Rachel. To, we'll give you Rachel too, provided you promise to work another seven years for me. <laughs> May we not experience this type of thing in Jesus' name. So instead of working for seven years, he worked double just to have his desired, um, his desire. Praise the Lord. So time can be manipulated. Even in our time, we see so many people, they work somewhere and they don't pay them their full wage. They work for a week, they give them two days, uh, um, uh, um, two days worth of pay. It's a criminal offense, but the time is already lost. The time is already manipulated. Praise the Lord. Time can be gained. Time can be gained, and it's different from time being restored. Time can be gained. We, we have an example in the Bible, 
2 Kings chapter 20, we know the story of Ezekiah, verses 1 to 5, 6 there about. In those days, 2 Kings chapter 20, in those days was Ezekiah sick unto death. So he was supposed to die. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Ezekiah wept so. And it came to pass, afore, afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, this was a prayer said that was answered immediately. Praise the Lord. Turn again and tell Ezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. Verse 6. And I will add unto thy days 15 years. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. So Ezekiah enjoyed additional time because he prayed. He didn't like the situation. He didn't like the news that was given to him. Praise the Lord. And he cried unto God and thank God that he had something to show. The Bible says in that verse 2 that he presented himself to the Lord and said, you know, I've served you. I've been faithful. Remember now, I have walked before you in truth. And God heard his prayer immediately and added more time to him. Praise the Lord. I pray for us tonight that as many that have lost time, and you look back and say, what really happened to 10 years? What happened to 15 years? That God will restore you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. So what does God want us to do? You know, looking at time, God wants us to redeem the time. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15. What do we have to do? We have to redeem the time. Because time is valuable. Time has value. It's, to redeem the time means that to, you have to make the most of every opportunity. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 16. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming, redeeming the time because the days are evil. So God is not just telling us to redeem the time just vaguely. He was being specific. He said, the days that you are in are evil. And the devil knows he has but, but, but a short time. Praise the Lord. Colossians chapter, five verse five, chapter 4 verse 5. I'm going to read from the Amplified and the New Living Translation. And if time permits, maybe we'll look at the good news as well. Behave yourselves wisely. Living prudently and with discretion in your relations with those of the outside world, that is non-Christians, making the very most of the time and season, which means buying up the opportunity. Because we know there's a popular saying that time waits for no man. The New Living says, live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. I'll read the good news. Be wise in the way you act towards those who are not believers, making good use of every opportunity you have. So God wants us to redeem the time. He doesn't want us to just allow time to pass and pass and pass. The, the, the other day I was thinking, I said, oh, it's been a while I've been in the United States, you know. Time just flies. It feels like yesterday. But it's been over a decade, much more than that. And I remember vividly when I came in, the flight that I took, it was in the summer, it was June. I remember very well the day I came in. And I'm just thinking about it. I said, wow, 15 years has passed. 
Praise the Lord. God wants us to awake. Romans chapter 13, verse 11. God wants us to awake. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Praise the Lord. So what does the Bible mean about our salvation nearer than when we believed? It's Bible study so we can be interactive. What does the Bible mean by that? For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. We are closer to the end. Praise the Lord. Every day that we have the grace to live and Jesus tarries, we are closer. We are closer to the time that we are going to go back to meet our God. The Bible says in Amos that we should prepare to meet our God. Praise the Lord. So God wants us to awake because time is very, very valuable and it's opportunity. God wants us to, we are supposed to bless the Lord every time. We're supposed to praise him. Good times, bad times, you know, difficult times, challenging times. Job was praising God. He, 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 he had a lot of questions, but he would, he would condition himself to praise God and to bless the name of the Lord, to exalt his name. Psalm 34 verse 1, the psalmist says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. So recently, about two weeks ago, there about one of my friends waiting on the Lord for the fruit of the womb for 19 years. Just had a baby girl. I was so happy. You couldn't imagine. In fact, I was so happy that the next day I went to shop. Because somebody was leaving to go to Nigeria that weekend. So I said, you know what? I must go. No matter what happens, I must find a way. I just found a way within my business. Card. No. I must go and shop. 19 years. Praise the Lord. But he didn't, she didn't give up on God. Her husband did not give up on God. And God proved himself. God wants us to bless his name at all times. His praise must continually be in our mouth. We have to know that God does not forget his children. God does never, he will never forget his children. Psalm 105 verse 17 to 20. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron. Until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. So, Joseph, at 17, was sold into slavery. And he became prime minister at 30. Praise the Lord. Even the people that sold him into slavery thought that he was done for, that he was dead. They didn't know that. You know, God was going to prove himself in his life. He never forgot him. Through all the thick and thin, through the trial of faith, through all the, all the uh, accusations that he had in Potiphar's house. And he ended up in prison. Through the time that even the porter and the, but, uh, the butler and the baker forgot him in the prison. God did not forget him. Praise the Lord. God still prove himself. And his word came. His word came and he delivered him and set him up and fulfilled his promise. So God never forgets his children. God also wants us to watch and pray. Number five, he wants us to watch and pray. Mark 13 verse 33. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. The New Living says, and since you don't know when the time, when that time will come, be on guard. Stay alert. Verse 34. 
for the son of man, King James, for the son of man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Verse 35, watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning, lest coming suddenly find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all. It says unto me, it says unto you, watch. Praise the Lord. Watch and pray. So God wants us to watch and pray. We, we, are, we can be, some of us right now may be in the process of time. Some of us, it may be the appointed time that's happening in our life right now. Some of us, we may be going through a time that's not yet come. Our time has not yet come. And we are still in this entire, uh, 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 entire uh, uh, cycle of time. But God wants us to watch and pray. God wants us to be doing all those things that we talked about. Blessing his name. Watching. As we round up tonight, let's look at First Chronicles chapter 12. Verse 32. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. The Bible says, And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. The heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their commandment. Let's look at the New Living, and then we'll look at the Amplified too. The New Living Translation. From the tribe of Issachar, there were 200 leaders of the tribe with their relatives. All these men understood the signs of the times and knew the best course for Israel to take. Do you know the best course for your family? Do you know what you need to be doing? Is God revealing anything to you at this time? Or is it been a long time you heard from God? The Amplified, and of Issachar, men who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do, 200 chiefs and all their kinsmen were under their command. They were not doing milli, miley, mo. They would need what they had to do. What is God asking us to do now? What is he revealing to, for us to do now? Where are we in time? Personally, where are we in time as a family? Where is your family in time? Where is this church in time? Praise the Lord. Where is United States in time? United has a lot of history behind it. It's over 200 years old. And you look at it, look at the time, look at the trend. Where is United States in time? Some people are so, so are some Bible scholars that they look at what is going on in the one day, try to align it with the Bible. And they, they can give numbers, praise the Lord, of, you know, the things that are happening now and how it looks. Putting in context that a thousand years in our own eyes is a day before the Lord. Putting that in context, praise the Lord. So where am I in time? Am I just running at a scatter trying to just... Let the second go, the minute, the hour, you know. Where am I? Praise the Lord. And that's one of the reasons why the Bible says be anxious for nothing. Because if we know where we are in time, we will not be anxious. We will not be. It's because most of the time we don't understand. Or we have not gotten the revelation. Or we don't understand the revelation. Praise the Lord. The Bible says once as God spoke in, Twice have I heard. For those who are attentive, they will hear twice. Praise the Lord. What is God saying to me and you now? What's he going to say? He said he's not going to, there's nothing he will not reveal to his prophet. The secret things belong to God. But he reveals them to his own. Praise the Lord. So if we don't know, it's because we are not paying attention. Not because God has stopped speaking. Praise the Lord. 
the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The children of Issachar, they knew, they understood the times. And they knew what they were supposed to be doing. So the, the question to us this morning, this evening is that, what is, what is God, what does God want me to do now? What, was, what does God want you to do now? Praise the Lord. Are you in an undue time right now or you are at the set time? The other day, was it on Sunday? I was looking at Sister Torera, right? She was, you know, heavy. I was just looking at her like this woman. God will help you to the end. Just, not knowing that, you know, 48 hours after, appointed time. Praise the Lord. There was one time that I was, as I ran up, when I was praying out with my daughter, they gave me three dates. You know, in the hospital, they will give you, they will give you dates. They will look at the pregnancy and say, this is when they gave me three dates. The day that I was supposed to give birth, or was it the next day, I was scheduled to travel. They gave me, the day they gave me was like um, one after the other. They gave me three days. Every one, they fell one. So the second day, I was saying that it, I didn't feel anything the first day they gave me. The second day, early in the morning, I wanted to travel out of state that day. It was a Saturday. And I started feeling somehow, ah, what kind of is this? So I went to the hospital. And they told me it was forced labor. That if I want to stay, I can stay. But if I want to go home, I can still go home. So I went home and I hate a uh, full bowl of ebba. You know, Gary, I, I, I hate it. Full meal. I hate it and I didn't feel anything again. Then later that night, I started feeling something again and it was getting, I said, no, I, I'm not staying. So I went back. When I got there, they said, oh, yes, it, it's coming, but, you know, we still just lie down and we were going through it. And then by the next morning, by the grace of God, I had my daughter. <laughs> in fact, one of the nurses that left me the day, the day before, the evening, she told me, no, by the time I come back for duty tomorrow morning, you should be, as if she was God. She came back the next morning, I was still there. She said, you are still here? I said, I'm still here. In pain, you know, all night. And then God proved himself. So I was supposed to travel out of state that Saturday. And they will give you those dates, those times where God knows the appointed time, the set times. So what is God saying to us as children of God? Are we even sensitive? The children of Issachar were sensitive. They knew what was going on. What's God speaking to your spirit? Where are you in time? Praise the Lord. And where is the church in time? In this end time? Where are we? And knowing where we are, understanding where we are, will make us to calm down. We know the assurance of God. And make us to walk along the line that God wants for us to walk. Praise the Lord. May the Lord expand his word in our hearts. I want us to bow down our heads and talk to the Lord tonight. And ask the Lord questions. Just talk to God as, you know, a father to a daughter, a father to a son, freely. Daddy, I really want to know what I should be doing now. Am I really doing what I'm supposed to be doing now? What do you really want me to be doing now? What, what, what is it? Do I have a clear picture? What are you be doing now? Or I'm just beating around the bush? Or I'm procrastinating? I'm just being careless? What is it? Talk to the Lord. Tell him that you really want him to reveal himself to you. Even tonight. Father, I want to see something. I want to see something. I want to hear you. I want you to draw me to your word. Point me to your word that we speak to this. I really want clarity. It may be that you may be going through certain things and you're just confused. You don't know what to do. You don't know what step to take. Talk to the Lord. Father, I need clarity. What should I be doing now? God can talk to you about the church. God can tell you something about the church.
Are you paying attention to it? Ask the Lord, Father, give me the grace to understand what you want me to do. Help me to watch and pray. Help me to redeem the time. In the mighty name of Jesus, everlasting Father, tonight, we just want you to speak to us again. We know you speak to us from time to time. We want clarity. We want to hear your voice. We want to see your face. We want to know what to do. We want to understand the times. Even in these perilous times, these difficult times, we want to know how to, to go about what you want us to do. We want to watch and pray. We want to win souls. We want to occupy it till you come. Help us, O oh Lord, that we will not just waste time. That we will cease from losing time from now on. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. We don't want to be like the children of Israel that lost 30 years. In bondage. 30 years extra, they stayed there. Father, please, in your infinite mercy, give us clear revelation and help us to have a, 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 a hearkening heart. A heart that perceives and hear that hears. Eyes that see. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. I want to give you a testimony as I step down. One time at work, you know, I have to review a lot of documents. What I do require me to review a lot of documents. So there was this document that was supposed to be approved. I had the particular version. And the approved version I had, I had the one that was before that. And then I got this particular one that was, was signed. And as I got it, I was just sitting down. I worked, doing work. I got it and I heard God say to me, read every line. Ha. I've read this thing before. We won't read every line. And I said, read every line. Okay. I put everything I was doing down and I started to read. Brethren, I was amazed. I got to some pages that some things were taken out. Some things I'll be put in. Some things were moved. I just said, Lord, what is God asking us to do? That time, if I didn't pay attention, one would run into error. I, do, I had very clearly read every line. And I started to read. So, God will help us. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Spirit is always speaking. And the Lord will give us the grace to continue to understand the times that we are in. So that we may reign with him in eternity. In Jesus' name.